So you just bought your DJI F3, hoping to do photogrammetry, mapping fields, and do plant health analysis. Or you just want to use Litchi for your flight planning instead of fitting with a small screen from the remote control. Well, then I'm sure the latest discussions in various blocks and forums left you a bit puzzled. No more iOS SDK support in the future. Third-party application developer should switch to Android. But the biggest bummer is this. The MSDK now exclusively supports Mavic 3 Enterprise drones. What? No consumer drones support anymore? Yes, unfortunately. At least as of the date when I created this video, it's true. Let's stop. There's a workaround. And this is what I will explain in this video. This video will explain all necessary steps for field mapping. Select your field you want to map in drone link and get the flight plan for it. We draw the flight plan in Litchi, export it into a CSV file, convert the CSV file to a KMZ file, create a basic waypoint mission within your controller, import the KMZ file, and open the new waypoint mission. If you do a field mapping, then you need one additional step. You have to calculate the settings for the time shots to get all photos needed for a correct mapping. If you're only interested in planning a flight in Litchi and importing it into your controller, feel free to fast forward to the relevant chapters. But now let's get started. First step is to create a new flight plan with Dronink. For that, we create a new plan and then put the edges exactly where we want to have our field to be mapped, like this. And then give it a name, like field mapping. And then we click here on the map to change parameters. For the Air 3, I have good experience taking the Mavic Air 2 as the camera who will do the mapping afterwards. First, I'll change the altitude a little bit lower, the overlap, good results I got with 80%, and the speed I set to 12 kilometers. Per hour max. With that, I have the flight plan the Air 3 should take to do the mapping for me. As drone link is not yet supported and probably will never be with the DJI Air 3, I now have to switch to the next step, and this is going to Litchi and uh, do the flight planning with Litchi for this pattern we have over here. Having drone link and Litchi side by side, I now created the flight plan within Litchi. Worth noting here is that if you transfer it to the waypoints within the DJI RC2, you will get curved lines. No matter what you do in Litchi, if you explicitly say you want to have straight lines, it doesn't adhere to that, you will get curved lines. To avoid this, there's a little trick, and for that I have to zoom in a bit. And you can see, for each turn I have, I have two additional waypoints I added. And with this, I make sure that they don't have the curved lines. So this is the trick for it. You do it at the entering of the edge and when leaving for the next point. I did it to all edges I have. It's very easy in Litchi. You just have to press the plus button over here. You will get additional point and put it like this. But okay, we don't need this one. We can delete it. I will show you at this point. I delete it. Press plus and then move an additional point to the edge to avoid the curved lines 
within the resulting waypoint mission. After finishing your flight planning within the Qi, it's time to export this as a waypoint mission for your DJI RC2. For that, the first step will be click on Mission and export it as a CSV file. As DJI RC2 expects only KMZ files for a waypoint mission, you first have to convert the CSV file we just exported by the G into the KMZ format. For that, I'm using the Litch utilities. You find the URL in my description below. And first, I have to pick the CSV file I want to convert, check if I want to Continue the mission or execute configure lost signal action. When the signal is lost, I pick the drone type. In our case, it's the DJI Fly app. You can click on allow straight lines, which in practice won't work. So we ignore it for that one. And we pick the mission speed in meters per second. I put it to four meters per second. This is quite good for my missions. And then the only thing I have to do is click on Generate DJI Fly Waypoint Mission, which will then give me the waypoint mission converted. And only part left now is to download the KMZ file for the DJI Fly app, or in our case, the DJI RC2 remote. Before we can upload our KMZ file, we first have to create a very short waypoint mission within the controller. For that, I click on Connection Guide, Camera View. As of now, no DJI drone is connected, but that doesn't matter. Just pick the map symbol, make it a bit bigger, and now just pick a random start point doesn't matter where we are, it's just a basic mission. So now we go to the waypoint symbol. First, second waypoint, and then just save it. We can exit it here, say save and exit. And now we have a basic waypoint mission, which we will override in the next step. Now that we created our basic waypoint mission within the controller, it's time to copy our converted Litchi flight path into the structure of the controller. For that, I just opened over here already, so you can see the path we have to take. I go version 5. There you find waypoints. Unfortunately, the structure over here is a little bit confusing because there's no last modified date, so we cannot see which one is the one we're looking for, which one are the one we just created before. So we have to open it folder by folder and uh, yes, 8th of January, this is the one I'm looking for. First of all, we take existing KMZ for a cupboard over here, just for the purpose of renaming. Take the name, copy it. Now we can move it to the bin and rename the converted litchi file with this strange name. Okay, now we have got the same name. We can go within the folder we have. First of all, we delete the one which is there. This was the one with the two waypoints. And copy our new mission into it and now we're good to go. We should have the converted litchi file as KMZ in the structure. We should be able now to see it within our waypoint mission, what we will check shortly. Now back in the controller, we want to check 
the waypoint mission we just imported. For that, we click the waypoint symbol. Then we pick the list, and here we see our latest mission. Open it, and then he already asked us to adjust it to open it. This is okay for us. And here we go. This is the Litchi mission we planned, converted to the waypoint format. And as you can see, the three dots are put at every edge of the flight plan. Did its job to straighten out the lines the way we need it for mapping missions. With that, we're good to go to test this flight. But there's one step more we have to do if we want to do mapping because we have to take many, many photos. And for that one, we just have to make a note of the duration of the flight. It is 1 minute 55 seconds. And this is what we need afterwards for our calculation. So just make a note of this number. And we then do the calculation of how many photos we need, how we achieve taking photos at every point. So part of the work Dronik will do for you is calculate the number of photos needed for the mapping. Here in the flight planning, the red dots represent the location where Dronik will take photos. To do the same thing in Litchi, you would have to create waypoints for each location where you need the photo, which will be kind of cumbersome if you've got a very large field. So to avoid this, I have a little trick for you. We know from Dronik that we need 24 photos for the mapping. As soon as we upload our waypoint mission to the controller, it will give us the flight time, which is 1 minute and 55 seconds, or in other words, 105 seconds. Only thing we need now is a very basic formula. We divide the 105 seconds by the 24 photos we need, and this brings us to 4.3. Every 4 seconds we need a photo to get the mapping. Out in the field, we set the time shots to 4 seconds, and now we can start our mission. As soon as we hit the first waypoint, we start the time shots, and now we get a photo every 4 seconds, and finally all the photos needed for our mapping. I hope this little tutorial was useful for you, and would be glad if you leave some comments below. Thank you for watching.